I'm here with Mo Kadama, Chief Marketing Officer for at t Business. Mo, great to see you. Thanks for making time to catch up with me. Great seeing you. It's, uh, I was thinking the other day, it's nearly a year since we got up on it's camera. It's exactly right. Um, almost exactly a year ago. You've been on many adventures since. I've been following you. Well, likewise, I've been following uh, Living Vicariously through your journeys. Um, so I get a lot of feedback from my audience that yeah. they hear a lot about 5G. They're all excited about it. But in many ways, they feel like it's coming, it's coming. It hasn't really reached us yet, and they don't know where to start with it. So one of the things I thought we'd do is have a talk about the state of the 5G in general, so past, present, and future. Um, maybe we just kick off a bit mm. of an overview of kind of how we've got to where we are now. So you've had some amazing success stories around connected hospitals, around right. sports stadiums, uh, manufacturing in particular, uh, and I guess 5G trials in general. Mm -hmm. um, maybe just give us a bit of a quick walkthrough on how we got to where we are now and some of those wins you've had so far. Sounds good. Um, so 2019 has been a pivotal year for 5G, not only for AT&T, but frankly, the entire industry. Um, and everyone is out building networks, mm -hmm. right, to bring 5G to life to the point, the feedback you're hearing from your audience. But I think what's been different about AT&T is that we have been very explicit in that 5G is going to start in the business, and that's where our focus has been. Uh, and then when you think about the, the second piece here, it's really that the device ecosystem is now mm -hmm. really just starting to hum, to spin up, um, which is where a lot of people, it becomes real for them, is right, is when they get a, get mm -hmm. a device that can Indeed. support uh, a given network. But I think for me, the single most important factor has been really getting to work with businesses who are stepping up to experiment with 5G, to understand how it can help them with their own transformation, whether that's creating entirely new experiences for their end customers, mm -hmm. at B to, B to C, um, or it's about how do I drive operational outcomes? You talked about manufacturing, yep. and a lot of businesses are trying to figure out how can I use this technology to help take cost out, remove defects, make my workers safer, mm -hmm. um, just think differently about Indeed. outcomes. And, and that's really what 2019 has been about is start getting the networks ready and then experimentation at scale with many, many businesses mm -hmm. stepping up to be a part of this. I think, there's, as you said, there's a lot of excitement around the consumer space, but in large enterprise, particularly in Australia, for example, where there's mining, there's manufacturing, right. uh, a lot of organizations are looking for that commercial gain, but they're also looking for some of the things you mentioned, such mm -hmm. as manufacturing, where they can save lives or make people safer. With all of that in mind, I mean, uh, you're literally at the bleeding edge of this, if you'll um, pardon the pun, but um, you know, where do you see the next big wave of adoption and uptake on 5G? I mean, is it the case that there is a particular market segment that is going to be adopted early and able to for any particular reason, or is it across the board? Well, you know, I think, we're already doing major proof of concepts, trials, or full-blown deployments with businesses in every single industry, right. whether it's finance, manufacturing, retail, venues. Um, I'll give you a couple of uh, interesting examples. Um, you know, the first one is uh, AT&T Stadium, which is mm -hmm. where the Dallas Cowboys American football team play. And one of the things that we brought to life there, we brought four experiences to life, but the one that's really getting just a truly amazing amount of traction, attention on social and more broadly, is one that we call Pose with the Pros, where it's massive immersive columns, and you can take your photo with up to five Dallas Cowboys, wow. and then you know you share a photo of it, uh, of it mm -hmm. or a video of it with yourself, you can put it on social, send it to your friends, etc. And I will tell you, Right, you know, one, this thing blew up all over social. There's one post with over 12 million views. Oh, but, <laughs> but really, what's been interesting for me is every single day, I have gotten some sort of outreach from media companies, from sports mm -hmm. leagues, from teams, from uh, musical artists yeah, and bands yeah. on, hey, can we adopt this? Can we buy this? We see use cases on how we bring this thing to life. And so 5G, like with any technology, is you start showing people the value and the power of what you can do with this, and it sparks ideas that you may never have even had. I love um, and I, so I love seeing that come to yeah. life, both from a B2B to C perspective, um, but then also uh, beyond just the smartphone, right, which is, again, mm -hmm. where a lot of people see the value of the next G, is how can we create experiences that fundamentally help us think differently about this technology, because it's not just about speed, it's also about latency, it's about the ability to connect massive numbers of things. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be much, much broader than the smartphone. And then uh, the second example I'd give you is with healthcare. Mm -hmm. We recently announced with the Ellison Institute, which is a new cancer research center uh, opening up in Los Angeles, brainchild of two West Coast icons, 
uh, Larry Ellison, the founder of Oracle, mm -hmm. um, and Dr. David Agus, who's um, a pioneer in healthcare, has done a lot of amazing things over the course of the last couple of decades. These two guys got together and they wanted to create a world-class experience, both on the research and the treatment of cancer. Yeah. And so we've been working with them to create one of the most smartest buildings on earth. We're bringing to bear wow. Uh, literally every technology you can imagine at this thing, 5G, edge computing, wayfinding. So mm -hmm. from the moment a patient arrives, they're tracked throughout the building. Yeah. They're automatically notified about when their appointment, their doctor's ready so they can go in and see them. If they get lost somewhere along the way, someone knows where they are, they can come talk to them. Uh, they're using it as part of research. Okay. Now that they're able to track every single person within the building, they're looking at the interactions between the healthcare professionals and the patients to see over time how this data is being exposed to learn more about cancer and how to treat it. Fantastic. So just, you know, whether it's the end user experience, again, yeah, B2B yeah. to C, or the research side of this, which is driving outcomes in healthcare, thinking about 5G and the efficacy of this technology differently. Well, you reminded me of a famous Monty Python clip that a uh, gentleman walks into, a doctor walks in the room and he says, I see you have the machine which goes bing. I <laughs> exactly. now think that these things are going to be machines that we should go ping yes, um, yes. when we connect them all up. Uh, in fact, there was a, you mentioned some... Uh, I, I thought you were going to go with the barely a flesh wound. No, not quite. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you, we raised an interesting thing around the early adopters with content, mm -hmm. for example. I remember back right. in the late 90s when the internet became a real thing, we used ISDN to connect band members around the world to record a an album that was right. one of the first. Now, I just came back from uh, an event in Europe and they recorded an entire song of 5G. Yes, on yes. Opposite sides of the building and so forth. And it was, it was phenomenal. Yeah, um, you, you gotta send me that link. Cause actually someone pinged me on LinkedIn two, three months ago okay. now. And they said, what is the use case you're most excited about? And I said, I love music. Yeah. And um, it was exactly that. It was the ability now to create a use case where you could not just have a garage band, but a virtual band yeah. with members all over the place and the drumming, the latency. Right, the Absolutely. extraordinary latency of 5G will allow yep. you know my kids as they get older to uh, sing, play guitar in real time with a drummer who might be across the neighborhood, across the city, or across the country. So it's cool to see that that <laughs> one's think, already coming alive. I think it's awesome, and, yeah. and as you said, uh, that, that content space is going to be where the early adoption is. But I'm excited to see that you've done like sports stadiums, you've right. done manufacturing, and, and obviously health, because mm -hmm. I don't think there can be any better uh, space to invest in this sort of technology. Um, the, I guess that brings me to my next question, that is that you know, there's always a question being asked predominantly in boardrooms now around the world I'm going to, and that is that where are we at with the maturity curve on the stuff? I mean, a lot of people are thinking about when do we get on board? When right. do we invest? When do we start to adopt this? Uh, when's the right time for them? Because you know, sometimes you can go early and you spend a lot of money learning. Mm -hmm. Other times you can be too late, you miss the opportunity. Based on what you've seen, I guess, predominantly in the North American market, where are we at, in your opinion, with the maturity curve? Are we still really just getting started? Are we halfway up the hill? Are we over that tipping point where we're now chasing it down to sort of get those solutions in place? Right. So it's a very logical question for a business to be asking mm. themselves. And when you think about the Gs, right, whether it's 2G, 3G, 4G, now 5G, um, you think about the life cycle of that as generally being about 10 years for each one of those mm -hmm. things. And um, from that perspective, 5G, I would say this was year one, 2019, right. okay. going into 2020. And it's as these networks come to life broadly, uh, and I'll tell you, we're actively deploying for businesses today. Mm -hmm. For consumers with AT&T, our plan of record, if you will, is to deploy nationwide what we call sub six gigahertz mm -hmm. 5G by mid-year 2020, when you're gonna start seeing more broad adoption, more devices coming live on the network. Um, as this happens, the application ecosystem starts to catch up. Right. So you think about LTE and what really made that G different. Um, it wasn't just the faster speeds, but it was the app stores coming to life mm -hmm. that brought to bear uh, the Waze's, right? Yeah. And the ability to start using anonymized data to better manage yeah. traffic and direct routing of, you know, the shortest distance between point A Being and point B. Being able to actually do something with it, Exactly. Right? And, you know, 5G is in the same place where when you think about it broadly, it's really going to be the next couple of years where the application ecosystem mm. starts catching up with the devices and the networks, and people are gonna wake up one day and be like, oh, you know, this is incredible new experience that none of us ever imagined yeah, yeah. at the beginning of this thing, kind of like Waze, and suddenly it comes to life. Now that said, if you're a business, 
and you're at the bleeding edge. You're the ones that are creating these experiences for your end customers or your employees. Uh, the time is now, yep. right? The time is now to think about your investment profile on how can I bring 5G to life, um, either in a real world example, in a lab instance, et cetera, so you can start learning and building these experiences, whether it's applications um, for your workers or your mm -hmm. end customers. This is exactly what we're doing right now with retail customers, with insurance companies that are thinking through, right. how do I use 5G, both from an adjustment perspective, uh, as well as for my end customer when they're in an accident, can I get more data from them in real time so that I can help them on their journey? I mean, literally, Literally every single industry right now should be thinking through how do I use this technology to drive the next set of outcomes? The time is now. Indeed. Uh, I think there was a paper that was published uh, early 2000s that essentially said that, and, and I'll paraphrase it, it said that those companies and those organizations that leverage technology early will right. invariably get such a lead on their competitors exactly. that competitors may never actually catch them up. That's right. Um, I remember when 2 and 3 and 4G sort of came out, you know, we, we had a sort of a, a minimum of five plus year. Uh, implementation, then another three or four years after it before anyone actually managed to do anything with it. So I think that 10 year window is a very realistic term for people to be thinking about because right. uh, this is not going to be an overnight thing. This is a big deployment. It's refreshing current networks as well as rolling out new environments in places that don't have telco at all because we've got places around you know, various parts of the world such as the 54 territories and nations of Africa that have no telephone infrastructure. Mm. So we're rolling out all new stuff there. Well, mining's a great example of this, oh, right? Indeed. Mining, for a long time, has needed extraordinarily low latency. Mm. They've been network challenged. Um, so a lot of interest in how do you use 5G yep. to create uh, carts that sense things in front of them in sub 10 milliseconds and stop, because otherwise the cart falls off, right? So there's exactly. so many use cases that are going to come to life that just historically yeah. You, you could never support without 5G. I think that's the most exciting thing at all. And as you said in mines, uh, if you've got a Terex Titan 10,000 ton truck bearing yes. down on you, you want lowest latency to tell it to stop, right? Exactly. So I guess one final question, and thanks yeah. for your time on all of that. Um, you must have some really fun use cases that most of us wouldn't get exposure to. Right. Uh, as, as a final wrap, maybe just give us a, a, an example of something you've seen that's just surprised even you, yeah. where 5G was leveraged for something that we hadn't anticipated. Yeah, uh, great question. You know, so um, really been thinking about this term, the, the fidgetal, right? Which is- The ringing, fidgetal? The fidgetal, you I like that? that. <laughs> um, you, know, you know, your kids have been playing with these fidget spinners, oh. and it is not that, right? I've got it a is, whole top drawer full of them. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, we'll have to talk about that later, why you have so many. Um, but the physical and the digital and bringing okay. those two things together is the digital, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the, the use cases that have surprised me um, and really excited me about thinking about how 5G is going to transform our society in ways that we might not have imagined, mm -hmm. starting to see some of this come to life. Uh, I think a great example of this is in manufacturing. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot of companies that we're working with on 5G and edge compute thinking through AR, VR. As an example, one manufacturing company that we're working with has literally thousands of unique devices, machines in one of their, their plants and their turnover is 20% plus per year. Wow. So they're always bringing in new people that they have to train to both do installation and repair of these devices. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to figure out how to get people more efficient, more effective, faster. Right. And so with AR, VR, we're building what we think of as guided workflows. Literally, you can see step-by-step -step instructions suited with the instrument in front of you, and it tells you how to do the next thing, right? Wow. It's I amazing. It. Yeah. It's amazing. But how do you transform society? The next step is if they get stuck with literally the push of a button, they can dial in collaboratively right. a remote expert. And then that expert can, again, be on the other side it. of the plant, like the other side of the country. It's phone a friend. <laughs> it's the phone a friend phenomenon for the 5G era. And over a screen, they can see video of what right. the person in the plant is doing and then help them. So you think about this, this can foundationally change the way we think about mm -hmm. work, about retirement in the future. The education, the whole thing. Yeah. I, school upwards. Exactly, yes. Um, you know, I'm, I can already envision some sort of platform where people demonstrate what their skills are, you know, keywords yeah. tagging, yeah. Uh, could be on manufactured discontinued equipment. Literally every business I know in some way at scale has some MD'd equipment. You need an expert that is your remote expert hey, you search for that key term, you know, Bob or Jane is retired in Florida. 
They log in one to two hours a day. They can help some company um, train the next generation of talent, become more effective faster, and make a little bit of money. Foundationally changed the way we it. think about work and retirement and uh, keep people engaged longer. Uh, that platform is coming. Um, it's going to be a very exciting time. And then I'll give you a fun one. You know, as we think about you entertainment. Just took, uh, you just took 5G and vaulted industry 4.0 yes. and the future work into it and tipped it upside down. It's, it's coming. I love it. I it's love coming. It. Okay. Um, the first time I saw this, I was thinking about it and I was like, it, it's a couple of years out, but someone will mm -hmm. build this mm -hmm. platform. Um, fun entertainment example to close this out is uh, I, I always joke, my, you know, my wife loved that Aquaman movie. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, it was a great, great flick. Jason Momoa did a nice job. And she was like, you know, I would pay to be in this movie. And it, it won't okay. be long, right? Because right. we're already yeah, yeah. starting to play with what we call yeah. volumetric capture, where literally you have cameras, you capture full body images of people. It's the way that we're yeah. bringing the Cowboys to life in things like the pose with yep. the pros experience that we talked about earlier, and be able to insert yourself into your favorite show, your favorite movie, or you're attending uh, the premiere or the first night you're going to a movie theater to watch something, and it's part of that experience of why you would go out to the movie theater is the ability to capture yourself in 5G, insert it. yourself into the film, and take a short clip home with you, share it with your friends. I love like, it. That's a B step to from B to 3D C. movies with exactly. glasses to 5G with emotion. Exactly. Mo, I love catching up with you because it's always got such amazing here. things to share with Thank us. Thank you. Thank you so much for making time. And uh, I'm sure we'll get a great deal of questions and response back from the audience Very with this. Good. And uh, I'm sure we'll flow that back to you and your team. And Thank you. Join the conversation. Let's see you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.